Well, I'm Joseph Scully, graduate of Belmont High in 1950, and born in Belmont on Wal uh, Walnut Street, 33 Walnut Street, yep. in, in uh, 1933. Okay. Well, I, I was going to be you, but it didn't work quite like I was going to continue there, so I, I joined the Air Force. Well, uh, Dickie Scarfo and I went in and, uh, and enlisted. Uh, I happened to go uh, in the Air Force in, in December 1951. Uh, Dickie went uh, uh, in the Marines in, in January 1952. Well, Charlie, D Dick Scarfo, um, Roy Sacco and I graduated from BC, uh, BC, <laughs> BHS in 1950. Charlie, who later became the Wellington School's principal, graduated yeah, Charlie in 1950. Christop Charlie Christopher Foley, right? Charlie Christopher Foley. Yeah. He, he was in, uh, in Poussin mm -hmm. career in 1952. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I knew I was going there, so I wrote him a letter. Well, I was on, on leave. I said, I'll see you in Poussin. But uh, it didn't work out that way. Uh, my orders, uh, well, first I, I went to uh, Samson Air Force Base in New York for, for boot camp, and that mm -hmm. was January of 52 to March of 52. And then uh, April, April to June, uh, I was sent to the Philadelphia uh, Naval Station for training as a photographer in the plate, uh, camera and plate maker. Mm -hmm. I think they sent me there because I, I, I had a job as a printer in Boston mm -hmm. before I enlisted. Mm -hmm. uh, I <laughs> my higher marks were in, in, in electronics, and that was, that was due to uh, Mr. Joyce when I was uh, in, in, in his, uh, his high school uh, uh, electrical course. Mm -hmm. Belmont High School taught us a lot, mm. and it served us quite in the service. Mm -hmm. It got me out of climbing 65-foot towers, uh, 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 communication towers, mm -hmm. into the supply sergeant, uh, working for a supply sergeant, uh, a Filipino supply sergeant uh, as a clerk typist. Uh, and then when we went to Mountain Air Force, uh, Mountain Air Force Base after training at, in the, at, the, uh, at the Naval Station in Philadelphia, they gave me a blueprint and I was supposed to set up all the barracks that mm -hmm. we were going into. We, by the way, we went, we <laughs> We went to Mountain Air Force Base by train. <laughs> and on the way, we stopped in Chicago. <laughs> and I went to Minsky's. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were in Mountain Air Force Base. And then we were given leave. And, uh, and in September, I flew out to uh, San Francisco mm -hmm. and boarded a Liberty ship. In the Air Force, but I went to yep. Japan. Mm -hmm. I went to Japan <laughs> in a boat. Uh, when we got to Japan, uh, we were at uh, at Camp Fuji in Japan, and uh, our orders to go to Pusan were redlined. They canceled us mm. to, from going from Japan to to uh, Korea. That's probably because the B-29s were refitted uh, in, in Mountain Air Force Base in Idaho uh, to uh, refit it to drop uh, leaflet uh, canisters rather than bombs. Mm -hmm. And that, that uh, those B-29s were assigned to the 581st Reproduction Squadron. Mm -hmm. What do you think the symbol on, on the plane was? I don't know what. A rabbit. Oh. The reproduction squadron. Oh. What we did was we, we, we were in the business of, well, you might call it psychological warfare. Yep. 
we made the ne negatives for the plates with the camera, and then we burned the camera on, on some uh, web uh, printing, uh, printing uh, presses mm -hmm. that was circular, mm -hmm. and and uh, we burned the uh, the negatives on the on the uh, on the plates, and the plates were coated with a, a solution of egg albumin. We stayed in in. Uh, Mount uh, Camp Fu uh, Fuji mm -hmm. for uh, you know, less than a month, and they flew us down to uh, Sam, uh, uh, Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, in the city of uh, Angeles, which is north of Manila, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, <laughs> they have. The flight line down there was big enough to hold the B-29s. Mm -hmm. I read the base newspaper, and I found out from an article in the newspaper that uh, there was an accidental explosion on uh, a gas explosion on the flight line, mm. and the article had uh, had Roy Sacco in it. Your classmate, right? Yeah. He actually ran into a, uh, a truck, oil truck, and drove it away from the explosion. Mm. Otherwise, uh, something, something else would happen. What, what happened there was, uh, uh, he was, he was assigned to the, the uh, fire department on the, uh, on the flight line. Mm -hmm. And the, all the firemen, have spe spe special shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, the the nails are uh, put in the shoe, at the bottom of the shoe. They they they're nails that don't spark. Yeah. This fellow went in for a replacement shoe, and was issued the wrong. It was issued the wrong uh, shoe, and the spark, when he got on the on, on the catway, uh, ignited the uh, gas fumes. Uh, he later survived. The explosion blew him away from the fire, mm. uh, and uh, he was in the hospital at uh, Clark for a while, and then he was sent sent back to the states, and he he did survive. So then uh, I knew Roy was on the on the base the same time I was, but we never met. Because he was in the on the flight line uh, in the fire department, the only time I went to the uh, to the flight line was on guard, guard duty, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of little stories there too. Mm -hmm. uh, our our squadron uh, went up to Korea in alternating three month uh, shifts, mm -hmm. so in between. We had time to play soccer. Even though the bombs, when, when we were on guard duty, <laughs> there were bombs in the hills, but they were far away. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the the uh, entrance to the base was concrete, but it was filled with bullet holes. Wow. Uh, we couldn't go off the base with any any uh, any. Uh, rifles or anything, mm -hmm. but they did allow some of us to go in an honor, honor, uh, uh, honor guard at a funeral, and that's the only time we had uh, uh, carbines with, uh, with ammunition on them, mm. but we, weren't, we were in the, bu base, uh, the bus, but we are not, not allowed to get out of the bus. Mm. We just went to the Gravesite, did our duty, got back, and bust back. I'm, I'm getting off the... No, uh, well, the area, the area at that time, you're only there six years after the end of World War II. There must have been a lot of destruction and devastation and poverty oh, oh, and... Oh, yes. Unexploded ordnance and... Yeah. yeah. The, uh, well, if, if you, well, if you went to Manila, uh, you could see people living in these... Uh, Leftover corrugated steel, yep, yep. Uh, the sheets 
that we used to make a temporary landing field. Yeah. Uh, there were bullet holes in it. That was it was devastation, really. Probably a lot of orphans, I'd, I'd assume. Yeah. Many orphans. Yeah. 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 Manila was finally called the Pearl of the Orient. Yeah. So did you get discharged from the Philippines, or where did you? Oh no, no, huh? no. Uh, I was there in '52 and '53, mm -hmm. and in 1953, the Am Jan January 1953, the Amos was assigned. Yep. So we were considered overage. So they gave us a choice, <laughs> be an, ape, uh, an air police, a cook, and there w the, that was the only two choices. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that, so I asked to be uh, uh, assigned to the Army. Mm -hmm. There was a, uh, a uh, Army construction company that was uh, in charge of uh, maintaining all the uh, all the uh, communication antennas. Mm -hmm. So the <laughs> the sergeant uh, uh, was nice. He went up the the antenna, the 65 foot antenna, with me uh, halfway. And he said, "Now you're going to have to work on this uh, antenna. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to let go with your hands and let the safety belt hold you." I never thought that thing was going to catch. Uh, after a while, you got used to it. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, but then then uh, and then, then it was good good to get out of the jungle, yeah. and just go up and get the breeze. <laughs> well, what did you do when you came home? What type of work did you go into? Well, uh, I didn't leave until uh, December of 1953. And from uh, January 54 to September of uh, 1955, I worked as a photo photographer uh, at the uh, Ant Air Force Base. We were in the, in the center of, of uh, California, uh, Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. And we had a large building with no, no, no windows in it. Yeah. And that was before they put everything on the ground. Uh, I worked there until uh, uh, September of uh, 1955. I had a bone up for the uh, entrance exam, and I went back to high school mm -hmm. in Colorado Springs. I didn't realize it until I saw that thing, admissions by, by interview. I didn't know that the interview was the main thing that I... Uh, Got to go to BC. That's how I got to go to grad school there. I interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't based on my intellect. It was based <laughs> on my gift of gab. <laughs> Talk about it. What year did you get out? Fifty nine or sixty? Sixty. Sixty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What did you What did you major in? Accounting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm accounting. After I graduated with a BSBA in accounting, uh, I got to, uh, because I had that. Um, uh, that job with Raytheon while I was going to school. Yep. They hired me in the accounting department. Oh, okay. And I became a supervisor mm -hmm. in accounting. And uh, I, I uh, got a job in, uh, in, the, in the FBM program office. Mm -hmm. The FBM program office mainly dealt with the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, dealt with uh, uh, the Antelope, Poseidon, and Apollo, uh, and uh, Trident missiles. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was given uh, an uh, analyst job in, in the program office. And from there, I was uh, worked up to uh, Work uh, to a job working with the the MIT uh, engineers, mm -hmm. going out to uh, companies that were giving us, uh, uh, you know, second source uh, product. 
Was that through Lincoln Labs or was it through the campus? Uh, <coughs> no, no. Uh, the MIT uh, students didn't like us. <laughs> they came out to Sudbury, where I was at the time, uh, and they had a picket line. Hmm. And we had to go through the picket line. They didn't like us working on, at the time it was Poseidon. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and they didn't realize that uh, most of the, uh, we, we were industrial support to MIT. Yeah. And actually MIT was getting some funds mm. from, from the contracts that we were giving to, uh, to the Navy. Mm. So they settled us. They settled that problem by, by uh, creating a CSDL, Char uh, uh, Charles Stock Draper Lab. Okay, yes. Not, sure. not the Lincoln Lab. Right, Draper, right, yeah. Uh, and then we worked with the engineers out of CSDL, <laughs> Draper Lab. Well, when did, when did you, uh, I assume you've retired like the rest of us, right? When did you retire? In, well, I didn't retire. Yeah. I was downsized. Okay. In 1995. Oh. And uh, I wasn't downsized for long because uh, I was working on the Apollo contract mm -hmm. and and the engineering support contracts on the, on the Trident. Mm -hmm. And before I was given the downsize, we submitted a proposal. Uh, to the Navy for for the final uh, uh, engineering support, mm -hmm. and my signature was on the cost part <laughs> of the of the co uh, of the uh, proposal. But they gave the the write up of the uh, the spec write up to the manufacturing engineers, and they didn't quite meet the same thing. The contract was given to uh, a division in, in, in Arizona mm -hmm. of uh, who built who built the uh, oh, the, the Blue Goose. Oh, the Hughes. Hughes. Hughes, yeah. Hughes, uh, Hughes Spaces. Formerly Hughes Aircraft, right. Hughes Aircraft. Right. So Raytheon bought that division. So they really didn't use it. <laughs> so did you did you stay on in the final analysis or when did you? Uh, no, no. Uh, I was given, I was given the uh, uh, the uh, excuse that it was good for Raytheon that I that I got downsized. Hmm. Uh, but later on, they called me back. Uh, Raytheon had us a. a uh, a semiconductor division in in California, mm -hmm. uh, and that one was going to be bought by Fairchild. Mm -hmm. So the controller at uh, the Raytheon controller uh, suggested my name as a consultant to go down there and figure out the. Uh, financial business. Mm -hmm. uh, first because there was uh, toxic waste around the, around the plant. And believe it or not, we had an insurance policy with Lloyd's of London. And there was going to be a suit mm -hmm. claiming how much we spent for the getting rid of the toxic waste mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, so I was hi hired as a as a consultant of 1995. It was after September, mm -hmm. uh, and until uh, I was a consultant until 1997, not full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I'd be going out to California mm -hmm. and writing writing the. Reports to the uh, to the su uh, to the um, to the uh, lawyers mm -hmm. that were handling the the uh, Lloyd's case, and all my 
all my uh, travel, uh, all my travel uh, duties, uh, assignments, uh, uh, were done by Raytheon in, in uh, at the time was in, in Lexington, mm -hmm. in Lexington Court. Uh, I found out so much from the co uh, controller's uh, reports out in California mm -hmm. uh, that uh, when I uh, when I went to get my tra uh, travel uh, uh, itinerary, mm -hmm. the uh, the secretary said they're afraid of you. I said why? He says you're finding out too much. <laughs> when I was when I was considered, we were considered overage. When uh, when the armistice was signed, uh, I was I I, I I ended up in the army. Yeah. My father was here in 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 the early parts of 1900, and he went back to Italy and joined the Italian army in the First World War. Mm -hmm. He was in a, a uh, an outfit up in the uh, northern part of Italy, in the Alps, mm -hmm. and his outfit was to keep the Germans from coming down through the uh, tunnel into northern Italy. There's a story about that. Uh, the, the Swiss say they designed, <laughs> they designed the tunnel, the Italians built it, and the Germans used it. <laughs> uh, so he was up there, and he got frostbite, and he couldn't. He, they couldn't. He, he was. He was actually. He was assigned. He was assigned to the Air Force. Hmm. It was a completely reverse. Uh, he was a, an immigrant in the first part of 1900. Yeah. And my my uh, my granddaughter went to, went to the. Uh, genealogy and found out they had they had a a, a a draft a draft notice in 1917 so instead of going in the army in 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 the uh, US army mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I don't know how true this is but uh, my mother said well all the uh, all the relatives in, in, in Italy said, you've got to come over here because if you don't come, you'll never be left. <laughs> you, you, they'll never left you, uh, leave you back and uh, let you come back in, in, uh, in Italy. Yeah. So he went back. He met, uh, he met uh, the whole family, and they said, well, if you come out of the war, you've got you to gotta meet, uh, you've got to marry so-and-so. Yeah. And so... Uh, he got out of the war in 1919. Mm -hmm. uh, lived in uh, in Grotteria, the southern part of Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 1923, he married my mother. And in 1923, uh, he they came back. He came back. He was allowed to come back to the United States. Uh, and br he brought uh, brought my mother, and uh, he was sponsored by by his uh, his aunt, mm. uh, who lived in Belmont. So, so here we are today. So that's what that's why we're in Belmont.